And I'll tell you something else this answers. Right down here, for a long time, it's had this popping, 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 like uh, one of the little teeth that holds it been broken loose. And now I understand, because that's right where the battery is, and it was swollen, and it popped it loose from some of those connectors. So that's why it was going pop, pop, pop in this area. And now it's not doing it, so it was just the battery. So you fixed a lot of things at once. I'm going to try to replace the battery on a HP NV17 100 AE. It could be 100, it's 1XX, it's a built model from the factory, but that's the, the model. I couldn't find exactly one like it, so I'm going to do this one and try to post it. First thing you want to notice is I've got the DVD tray before you completely shut it down. Punch your DVD tray and get it out because there's one screw on the back here that you have to get to with the tray out to release the back. And there you see it. You should also uh, get a place and put your screws down because they're different lengths and you need to put them back in exactly the same position. Well, as you can see, I've started at this end. I used a, a chopstick just to whittle to a fine point so it wouldn't scratch anything, and started it. And you got to be very careful at the beginning to start with the little black adhesive strip and the gray strip at the same time. And then it just lifted right out. It uh, comes all the way down here to the end, so there's no need to try to leave it hanging on for that little bit. I always like to get a ground point that I can touch before I touch anything or do any movements. And so I took the cover off this one and saw that that center screw is actually grounded. There's There should be a grounding screw on this side that you can look at and make sure there's actually a ground wire like this going to that receptacle. I checked this one over here out of the switch and it doesn't have a ground wire. So it would have been fruitless to use one of those screws. So you have to double check that there's actually a ground wire going to your receptacle. Now this screw is now grounded. And if I can touch that, I'll be, I'll be grounded before I touch anything in the building. I like to make a little pattern of where all the batteries and screws and case screws go. And so as I pull them out, I will tape them to those positions so I can be sure to get them back in the right place because they do vary in length at times. Started over here in the corner where you could lift it up. You have a little spudger tool like that and got it uh, popped up and stuck a piece of a credit card in there to hold it while I started working right here and go in and up and kind of pull back and release the clips and it's starting to come loose. Okay, after slowly working my way around, starting here, working all the way around, it's the only way I could do it because this was very tight, didn't want to come apart till the last. We've got it all apart. Now we see the screws. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight screws on there. So we'll take those off and place the battery. Before installing, I wanted to verify I had the right battery, so I checked out the spare part number here, 916814855, with the one I bought. 9168148555 so we're good to go and you can see the battery is swollen it's visibly swollen now we're going to remove the screws there's one two three four five six seven so these screws should not be removed they look like they might but they're they don't so here's the battery out, just after you take the seven screws out, just pry it up by the two tabs right here, but keep grounding yourself because there is some delicate stuff just real close to everything. Now I'm gonna install the new battery. Just lay it in. It just snapped right in. There's alignment pins here and here. I thought those were screws, but it's just alignment pins. And uh, of course, this is where the connection is. So you wanna be sure to kind of push that down when you're, but the screws will take it down if you don't. Yeah, it looks like all the s screw holes line up right in the center, so that's good. As you see, I laid out my screws, and I'm not, now just going to do them in reverse order. And I made a listing of them so I can't confuse them. New battery installed and ready to get up. Now, I want to show you, I have this interchangeable tool set, so I taped that thing on so it wouldn't fall off while I was working, maybe short something out. But also, um, I had to remagnetize the tip more because the scripts weren't screws weren't holding snugly on it so you just have to take a another magnet and stroke it down along the you know lengthways like this same way all the time and you can 
super magnetize your tip so the screws will stay on there. And don't force any screws. It's a very, these are brass fittings they go into. So, you know, you'll feel immediately. If you have to back up half a turn to get it started, just, just take it easy when you start these things. While I was in there, I got all the dust off of my uh, fan, sucked it out with a little vacuum cleaner and a brush. And I also lubricated my hinges with a Q-tip and a little WD-40. And then I vacuumed out all the dust from the inside of this uh, pan. It was dusty, so hopefully that'll keep it a little cooler. Well, here's the moment of truth. Before I put the adhesive strip back in, I just want to make sure the battery's not bad or I've done something else wrong. So I've plugged it up over here, and now I'm going to turn it on. It'll take a while for it to boot, but we'll see what it does. Boy, a reboot never took longer. Apparently undoing the battery did something to the CMOS. I wondered about replacing the CMOS battery while I was in there. It's that thing that looks like a quarter. But... Uh, Nobody really recommended that, so it looks like we're going to be all right. Yep. So I did a battery um, check on my HP software. It says it's okay and it's charging. It came with about 66% capacity already in the battery. One final note on that is remember the screws that go along the underside of the front of the computer are at an angle. So don't try to do them straight in. Start them at an angle and they'll go right in.